and welcome to another edition of Grand Sinners Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, the professor, Russ Stevens, Uncle Joe McLaughlin, and he's JP's first son, Tim Hoey. We have another great show for you tonight, so boys, let's get it started. We have to start with the Boston Celtics. This is a funeral, okay? But the, uh, so, you know, the person's not completely dead. He gets to come back in January. But this is the last time we'll spend a half, you know, big time on the Celtics for a while. Celtics lose game six, 125 to 113 to the Heat. Look, it was 96 to 90, boys, and then a total collapse. Yeah, they, you know, Spolstra, I don't know what Spolstra said in the timeout. So he took a timeout at the nine minute mark where the Celtics had just gone on that run up six. And the game literally wasn't the same after that. It was as if the game, the, the entire momentum shifted 180 degrees after that timeout. Yeah, he lit Bam Adebayo on fire there. That drive yeah. down the lane just got everyone excited on the Miami yeah. bench, and then they went crazy. <clears throat> yeah, it was. For as, for as talented Bam is, uh, Timmy, uh, he's a he's a competitor. Yeah, he's he's a tremendous player. You know what? What were we talking about? Um, we we're talking about where were the Celtics really? deficient and we were talking you know who was going to match up with philly center we didn't have that big physically imposing athletic center that was you know enticed isn't that guy as you said last night scotty good very good backup center on a good team yeah he yeah, can't he, with the elite athletic strong centers in the league yeah he he had grant williams in was with it had been at it, during that run williams had played a large role he left Williams coming out of that timeout for a couple of minutes. I think Williams started to fade a little bit. Maybe he'd played too much at one time. He You're put right. Tyson in and then Bam went to work on Tyson. There were four possessions, Joe, that you that yeah. you started with that drive that were abusive to Tyson. They were then abusive. the mid-range jumper and then that pass to uh oh. was it Harrow? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. He just single-handedly uh, dismantled the Celtics in did. that stretch. Yeah. Well, Jason, that's, that's what we were talking about months ago, right? Was that position being lacking against a, a guy like that? Yeah, and Danny goes out and doesn't get anyone to fill in you know, that spot, doesn't get really anybody off the bench, and it showed. Look, I thought at 96-90, the whole Toronto, Philly, and six games of playing heavy minutes just fell upon that exact moment with eight minutes left mm -hmm. in the game, and they had run out of gas. Yeah. Well, you know, if you stop and think about it, Pat Riley went out and got Goran Dragic and Crowder at the trade deadline. Guys, well, he, got Ig he got Iguodala. He got Iguodala. Yeah, Igu 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 and Iggy. Dragic. Now they said been they, there for a while. Yeah, yeah. They they did they, they uh they filled vital roles against the Celtics, and yeah. we had we were throwing Brad Wanamaker and Shemi Ojale in those in those <laughs> positions, and he's. Good Pat, yet again. What were they giving up for guys like this? You know, it's Joe, I only like seconds. And I, I couldn't agree with him more. I think this this show, we said it at the time. You know, Danny, for all of his reputation as trader Danny, he has stood Pat at deadlines over the last several years. And, at least five. you know, you look down your nose. Had someone said, well, Danny should go get a, I mean, even we fall victim to it. You go get Iguodala. And, and all of us would have said, oh, my God, Iguodala's washed up. He's too expensive or whatever. He lit us up. That Miami, I don't think, wins that game that the other night without Iguodala you know, hitting those threes. The microcosm yeah. life, you, you get less grief for making no decision than you make for making the wrong decision. That's right, know? Timmy. Yeah. So if he makes the wrong decision, he's going to get tortured. He won't get tortured as much for making no decision. Yeah. Look, the Heat could afford to sit Smelly Kelly for the whole series. He's $15 million a year, and they could still afford to yeah. sit him down. If Kelly's in the Celtics, and they had no second thoughts about it either. He's playing no. 20, 25 minutes on, on, off the bench. Yeah, he might have. He might have. We were one player short. I mean, at the end of the day, what you want, you, you want your eighth player on this team to be named Williams. You don't right. want your seventh right. player to be named, whether it's Robert or Grant. You want your eighth player. And yeah, great point. Our problem is we had six guys. I mean, and we, we'll talk well, about five, Hayward. But, five, and a, five and a half. Right. right. But we had, we had those guys. We had those <laughs> six. Um, and, uh, and, and we, it, we just did not have the seventh guy, right? That the seventh guy would, whether it's a big, a, a great backup point guard or a, or a shooter, that's the person we needed to be number seven. 
We and thought, instead, we got Grant Williams. We thought Grandpa was going to be that shooter. I thought he was going to. That's how he was yeah. brought. He was that guy who made those shots that he missed near the end of the game. Yeah. Right? That wide open three, that dagger, or that shot that brought you back into the game. That He didn't just miss. He missed by a lot on those yeah. shots. That was a disaster. They weren't on the rim and bouncing out. They were they were bricks. And yeah. you expect the second they left his hands, you expected them to be a brick, right? Yeah. Yeah, look, we said it before the series that Grandpa needed to come back and he needed to contribute. He came back in game three and he was a complete and utter disaster because they needed him to play at a certain level and he did not mm-hmm. fulfill that expectation. Yeah, and I'm sure that's went into Scott why why Danny didn't make a deal. Everything, everything looked like rosy at the deadline in February. Kemba hadn't really been hurt yet because remember, he went out at the All-Star game, played 37 minutes in the All-Star game. It wasn't the same player. Gordon hadn't been hurt again yet. So everything at the deadline was rosy, but the problem is, is they had no room for error. And the whole Chevy. Tyler, Tyler Harrell was their sixth man and Gordon Hayward was our sixth man mm-hmm. and they did not compare favorably. Oh my no. God. A rookie versus a max contract guy. Look, yeah. it's very encouraging moving forward because uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum Terrific. took it to the yeah. next level this season. Except yeah. the first quarters for Jason. Yeah, I mean, in general, they, Joe, he, you know, he, he became a star player, I think, in the NBA. There were times during the, the last two series, there were long periods of both series where Brown was the best player on the court for either team. I, I agree with that, Tim. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what's been interesting to watch is that, um, you know, as Tatum's ceiling has gone up, so hasn't Brown's, right? Well, I think we right. all would have felt yeah. like Brown's ceiling was sort of limited. And what Brown did, which is really the hardest thing for a young player to do, is actually raise a ceiling. I think Brown's best days are in front of him still. Well, maybe they have a little, you know, like sibling rivalry between the two of them. And when Tatum ups his game, Brown feels Mm -hmm. the need to be competitive. Well, like I said last night to Timmy, I just think that Brown has a more mature game right now than Jason Tatum. More willing to play defense, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, just more mature right now, a little more in control. Uh, just has a sense of, of defense. Yeah, I mean, defense look, I, I, would, I would agree that in one sense, Scott, but but Brown is not seeing the defense that, that Tatum's seeing thrown at him. Exactly. He Brown benefits is, from yeah, the, right. the doubles. Tatum is being defended like a superstar. Brown is not being defended like a superstar. Brown is, is still spending a fair amount of time in the corner on those threes By and driving himself. to the hoop. Yeah. He's not being asked to create his own shot like Tatum is. Yeah. All right, Brad Stevens... Ends up if we put Brad Stevens as the Miami coach and Eric Spolster as the Celtics coach, would there have been a different result? I was very I impressed think, with Spo. Yeah, I, 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 gotta, mean, I gotta give it to him. I think it would have gone seven games. That's for damn sure. Would have would have ended in six. Um, I think I think Brad got. I think he got out coach all that all that zone stuff that Spolster threw at him. It just took too long for Brad to figure out. Timmy, you talk about Nick Nurse and how he outcoached. You felt like he outcoached. Mm-hmm. Well, he outcoached him just by standing in the corner for Tatum's pass that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. It's true. Brad Stevens yeah. doing that. Come on, Brad. Stop put your thinking cap on. Go stand in the corner and yell yeah. for a pass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we're going to put that. a black shirt well, on. Look, what, what Brad needs to figure out is, you know, they were two and seven in games that went into crunch time. In the last nine games that went into crunch time, they won a couple against Philly. That's on the coach as much as anybody. You know, he's got to design plays. He's got to get the ball. Marcus Smart just took way. He Marcus Smart took twenty two shots yeah. the other night. Yeah, and, well, that's and, and he had shots seven. Shots. Yeah, no, he we're talking too many shots. About when, 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 when Marcus Smart scores, scores twenty points, that's when your safety makes the most tackles in a game. That's you know? right, Tim. Exactly great, right. great that's analogy. That's not a stat, you know. Yeah, Absolutely. he's gotta he's gotta get the ball. Right. He's gotta get better shots for that team in the fourth quarter uh, of the in crunch time in the fourth quarter. He's got to figure out a way to get better shots. Yeah, Marcus Smart, Smart is your fourth or fifth option. That's exactly right. <laughs> he's a yeah. he's a very good player when the time is running out That's of the 24-second right. clock. Right. Marcus is your man. No, we, wanted, otherwise... we wanted Gordon Haywood taking, uh, hitting and making the shots that Marcus Smart takes. That's right. And he's Gordon sure Haywood refused to take died. a lot of shots. Well, I'm sure that yeah, he no, turned Scott, him down. Look. He's the guy that we spent the money on to make those shots. 
Yeah, no, and look, he's dishing I, the ball off with five seconds left and 24 second clock yeah, to Brad Wanamaker. It's clear <laughs> that the one of the reasons why Smart took 22 shots is that that Hayward no was not would. confident. Well, Hayward wasn't confident in his shot. It was clear. I mean, uh, so and, and Marcus is always ready to jump in and to start <laughs> poisoning threes. Like you don't have to twist his arm. <laughs> no, you don't. All right, boys. <laughs> Here or will he be gone or stay? Now, here we go. Enos Cantor is he? Uh, Back with the team, or is he gone? Doesn't he have another year on his contract? I don't think he, so. No, he has a He'll player. Op, he has a player option. Player option. Um, okay. But I think that if he, I think he's, if the if the Celtics upgraded a big, he's they'll have to move him because it's five million dollar contract. Yeah, okay. he could be a trade trade piece too. Yeah. Brad Mason Terrace's own watermaker, gone. Gone. I'm afraid so, Scotty, because. They they've got those draft picks. One of the first one yeah. should be a backup point guard. Do you know what? Do you what know what Wanamaker's? You know what Wanamaker's turnover rate was in the Miami series? Twenty one percent. Twenty one percent of the time he touched the ball, he turned it oh, over. Oh Lord! Oh my God! That's because he hogs that, the ball too much. He's is that some modern, up. Is that some modern day record or anything? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a. It should that's be. a that, that's the staggering percentage. Staggering. staggering. I've never heard that statistic. Four percent. Mm -hmm. was the regular players percentage like four or something oh yeah i mean i'm, I'm sure to, uh, you know brown doesn't you know those guys are probably around 10 percent or something like that one out of every 10 possessions all right shemi has gone uh, that for sure yeah please, uh, you would please. think no, yeah don't, don't well say. he's so he's super inexpensive uh is the thing oh, it's maybe so he's good I. at practice so yeah. am i i'm super inexpensive too i'll take the minimum yeah yeah mm -hmm. um I, i'm just clearing up and all right Taco Fall, great little novelty act. It didn't really work well in that final seconds in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Is he going to make a 15-man a, a roster in the Celtics, or is that, that it? It'll be a two-way again, I think. They'll give him another year to sort of see if he can spend more his way time in Maine this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys. Uh, Doc Robert Rivers fired by the Clippers. I am not surprised whenever a team quits at any time during the playoffs, when they clearly quit, the coach has got to go. Well, now both Philly and New Orleans are looking for him, so he's got his choice. What does he want? What city does he like better? Yeah, he's perfect for Philly. I mean, he 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 goes. But he'd to rather Philly be in team. New Orleans. He'd rather be New Orleans, but he's he's perfect for Philly. If you if if you want yeah. somebody to get Joel and B to play hard, you you hire Doc Rivers. And Philly's management would love him as a spokesman for the That's franchise, exactly so right, they can yeah. hide. That's and, you know, Doc, Doc has the cachet to talk to any player in the league. You know, he does when he when he speaks, you know, he he, he has the pedigree yeah. to well, you should listen. That's you know? the right word. He's got the pedigree, Tim. That's right. All right. Before we go, Lakers versus Heat before we go to the Patriots. Who's going to win? Of course, I've been saying this since I was in Santa Monica in November. Uh, Lakers are going to win. Yeah. I agree. LeBron, I don't know if you guys saw the, that last, the late last, that last quarter against Denver when LeBron decided he had enough of Jamal Murray's shit and just decided to guard him and yeah. Murray completely disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah. Uh, at, at LeBron's age, um, to be able to achieve the level Remarkable. of playing, uh, Michael Jordan, was was he even in the league anymore? How old is LeBron? How old, how old is LeBron? Let's see, 35? 35? 34, 35, yeah, yeah. 34, what a, what a body He came in when he was 18, too. He's yeah. amazing. What a body. He's amazing, he yeah. And he's yeah. pretty remarkable. Temple, too, I mean. You know. That's exactly right. Tom Brady asking, he knows his moneymaker is his arms and his legs. Oh, yeah. much more remarkable than Tom Brady. I mean, Tom Brady just has to go back and, and, and throw a pass. This guy is... Uh, he's got he's to work for a living. He sure does. All right, Patriots beat the Vegas Raiders 36 to 20. First of all, I got to say, John Gruden is... I like John Gruden. I like him, uh, yeah. you know, as a broadcaster and a coach. He's perfect for Vegas. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, he signed him for 10 years. Well, his next thing's got to be a magic act at the, uh, at the Flamingo. I mean, <laughs> he's a showman. I mean, he could literally... Do a one-man stand-up uh, act, uh, right, at, at, at a casino. That could be a second career. Uh, he may do it. Running backs were the stars, boys. First star to me, Rex Burkhead. You know, if you were watching a movie and you were watching, like, the running back before the movie 
before he plays, got as high as a kite on every drug he could ingest. <laughs> He would then play the way Rex Burkhead played during that game, just uh, fly. And he got, right. he got like just taking off, he did. If you were making a Hollywood movie, okay, and you wanted like a highlight of like the most dramatic move you could make scoring a touchdown to end the game, it would be Rex Burkhead doing like the dive and almost the full 360 landing on his teammates back and being carried into the end zone. Mm-hmm. I mean, those were, I, I, like I said, if I was a professional player, I would want the snapshot of me five feet in the air, spinning around, crossing the goal line. I would blow that up and have it hung in my man. <laughs> it was remarkable what he was doing. He but played, that's yeah, the look. reason why he can't stay on the field, too. Oh, no, that's he exactly plays what I was with say, that gronk like abandoned. He's, he's not pacing himself, right? <laughs> he's going in and he's saying, I'm going to run like a bull in Pamplona. Right, as, at as, as, for as often as as hard as I can, and I'm only going to last four games, and I'm still going to get my paycheck well, at the end of the you year. You know, if you're a running back in the NFL, you better run like that because you are yeah. replaced. Yep. Well, someone please tell Sony to run like that. Oh, well, the thing is, is Joe. The thing is, Joe, he did. I mean, look, I I, I was thinking a lot about Joe on Sunday because <laughs> once JJ Taylor went in the game and Sony Sony Michelle saw that his grip on that running back position literally slipping away from him before he got his a little eyes, faster, didn't he? He got a little faster and a little bit more elusive, and he ran through some tackles finally. Yeah, I think all of New England, when Sony Michelle breaks a tackle, thinks of Uncle Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He he broke a couple. And JJ Taylor. I mean, he's I don't know if he broke a couple, but he made people miss, yeah. and he hadn't yeah. been doing that. That's oh, right. there you go, Joe. Wow. Give him a little Joe's gonna, Joe's going to need a nap after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, props to J.J. Taylor. He's not going to last much longer at 5'6", 80, 80 pounds, but he's doing well right now. Hey, Deion hey. Lewis is still in the league, doing well. This guy's smaller than Deion Lewis, Joe. Get whatever you, I know. Get whatever you can out of him, right? I mean, just just get what you can. Use them um, up and spit them out. That's yep. the way the running backs go nowadays. That's right. Um, Chase Winovich, we talked about him a little bit last week. Looks like a star in the making. Yeah, Joe, I'd love to hear what you're seeing. You watch this stuff more closely than we do, but he seems to have improved his all-around game this year. He is definitely, and he's better against the run, but for some reason, he's not getting in a lot. He's only getting in like maybe half the plays. Yeah, I wonder if they're you know, trying to they're keep him fresh. They're using him very you know? sparingly. I would think that, I mean, like when Chandler Jones was man in that position, he was playing 100% of the snaps, remember? Yeah, yeah. And he's only playing like 45, 50% of the snaps, even in a game like last week. If you want to get noticed as a defensive lineman in the NFL, grow your hair halfway down your back. You know? Oh, yeah. Sure. You're the uh, most recognizable guy in the field. Knows, everybody knows who's making the tackle. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Look, if before the season, the offseason, if you told me I could have the choice between Derek Carr in the place for the Raiders and Cam Newton, I would have taken Derek Carr every day for the week, but not now. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, the Patriots won a game that Newton did not – play particularly well in. that's a good sign right yeah that's that's a very good sign but i'd also put it on the wide receivers uh, uh, whoever we have weren't able to get open edelman only has two who had two catchers Nikhil yeah. harry actually played well and then i don't know flotsam and jetsam bird and, that's right. bird. and what about and zuber i yeah. never even heard of the guy yeah right he was just a hey guy i got i um hard. i got a take i want to run by you guys um you know, if if Stefan Gilmore, who has not played well this year, no. is getting very dangerously close to the Bill Belichick zone, and the Bill Belichick zone is when he realizes that the value you're bringing to the team is nowhere close to what we're providing you, and if I've got somebody behind you that can do your job at 80%, I'll trade you at the deadline. I was just going to say, the trade deadline's looming. Right? I mean, he's yep. getting dangerously close in four more games. If he just keeps going out there and playing – you know, sea level football, Belichick's going to trade him because he's got JC Jackson. Big, big he's got the Jones kid. He's got McCourty. He's got Jawan Williams. He's got Kyle Duggar. They don't lack for Devin McCourty. They don't lack for guys in that backfield right now. It really couldn't be playing worse than Gilmore's playing right now. Awful. I mean, stupid and bad. Not only just bad physically, but bad like mentally. And not he, and he played even worse the last four games of last season, I thought. Yeah. 
What was that, Scott? Not tackling? Not yet. tackling at all. Not 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 engaged. Be interesting because if you had a team that was competing, say in the NFC, who had uh, you know some an extra wide receiver, uh, that might be a nice move. Oh, you don't think Seattle, like who, San Francisco, with San Francisco, Francisco or, or, or more, or Seattle? That you know, Seattle's defensive backfield is is le- is is historically bad right now. You know, yeah. like. Um, so, uh, you, you won't be able to get that kid Metcalf, for no, him, but, no, <laughs> but you might be able to get one of those other guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you think, uh, the, you think Gilmore Cowboys are always looking for a big name? Do you think Gilmore just has the big contract disease right now? Yeah. There's always been this thing about Gilmore is that he seems to play up to the level of competition and he just loses interest in you, these quote sort of early year meaningless games. But I think, uh, you know, he, he it's clear at this point he held Belichick up for some money you know he he was going to hold out and oh, he got yeah, an extra five million guarantee thing. right so uh, you know Belichick doesn't like that you just held me up for five more million dollars and you're going to play like this see you later yeah um, offensive line I know it's not sexy to talk about it so impressive Joe Tooney comes in at center in replacement of uh, injured David Andrews and plays wonderfully and then you have this guy Michael Oh, when you Illuminous. found pick out of um, playing in Tony's place, just a stud, a 350 pound plus guy. I don't know how he lasted the sixth round, but we're going to keep him. Joe, no knock on you, but last night's show, I said Joe could have got 15 yards on those Sony Michelle runs because the oh, offense, yeah, easily. The offense, you know, he made a couple of cuts, and it was, I think it was the first time I've seen Sony make Sony Michelle make a cut running the ball and not just run right into a tackler. Um, that offensive line did a heck of a job for, for and, Sony, especially. And on one of those runs, he didn't have a fullback in front of him either. Yeah, oh, look at the Joe heaping praise and Sony Michelle. We're gonna uh, again. He's gonna need I, another. I, nap. I've been stuck in that position for the last three shows. I've had to <laughs> get you guys out. He's a change of pace back. When they're looking for Burkhead to come smashing heads, you slip him right through the line on him. Well, it's going to be very interesting because uh, Damian Harris practiced mm-hmm. today. Uh, James White is back. Um, yeah. I don't know, you know, how much room they're going to have in the right. Yeah, if you, uh, if you, you wonder, a, if you wonder, they thought someone off. would be hurt by now. Right. You, know, you wonder right. if Sony Michelle smelled James Harris coming. Yeah. Uh, oh, and, sure. And little, Wait, if you have a fan, if you have a fantasy football team, you do not want a Patriots running back at this point in time because oh, they get yeah, five of them. <laughs> right. Um, they may have to expose actually JJ Taylor back to the practice squad. You yeah. would think that he'd actually go there. Yeah. Um, can the Patriots get a consistent pass rush? Uh, I know they got, um, you know, it ha- they, they look better obviously against the Raiders, yeah. but against a team like the Chiefs, if you're not in Mahomes' face, you got no chance. Yeah. I, you know, Joe, they seem to always figure it out. They'll scheme up a pass rush, you know, take some eight games, but yeah. they seem to figure it out. And um, I, look, I, I don't, they're not going to be a great pass rushing team. They're not going to have a great defensive line. They're just not big enough. Right. Oh yeah. It, and you know, they've got Winovich's a nice guy because he's got two, three, four moves, but no one else, you know, yeah. that can rush off the line. The rest of it's going to have to be stunts and, you know, you know, disguise blitzes, maybe coming, maybe sending McCordy, but I think he's a step slow now. Well, yeah. They got the other kid, uh, Uchi, whatever his name, Josh Uchi. Uh, that, out John of the DL. Yeah. yeah. That, um, maybe we'll have Dunga going on safety blitzes. Yeah. Yeah, but those guys, <laughs> like we said, like Timmy said, oh, I was most impressed long with doing that. defense in that game. They were... I've never seen anyone chase that uh, Baltimore uh, Jackson quarterback around like they they just had his number. They yeah. whatever defense they schemed up, boy, they it worked. Well, that's a great three and into, against them. That's a great segue, Timmy, into our predictions. They're playing the Chiefs in Arrowhead Stadium. Oh. Obviously, a big game. Rusty, tell me what you think. You know, again, the yeah, they're gonna. They are going to get hammered. Watching that game the other night was like watching a video game. They are so fast and so good. And that quarterback is so 45 to 17. They are going to get crushed on Sunday. Wow. Crushed. Joe, Uncle Joe. I, I hate to say it. I'm, I'm inclined to go with Russ, but I think it's going to be like Ali Foreman. Going to rope a dope him with the running backs. Yeah. Try to keep it to 
41 to 17. <laughs> All right, Timmy boy. <laughs> 34 in Kansas City. Yeah. All right, I'm a homer now. I'm just totally bought into Cam Newton. I got yeah. Patriots 42, Chiefs 38. <laughs> no, here we go. no, 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 no. Who's Cam throwing to? We might need to do an intervention on you for that. Pick. You, that <laughs> there's no, like, how the Patriots score six touchdowns. I don't Kansas know. <laughs> if they, you know, it's going to be if the Patriots do do it, we'll never hear the end of the Oh, no, it's going to be Cam awful. Newton's going to have to score at least four touchdowns. Uh, yeah. Running or something. I, I don't know shipping, how the math goes. He'd be playing it in a loop, you know. All the <laughs> over he's going to buy. He's going to buy. They'll get plenty of possessions because Kansas City scores in three plays. I know they, they never do. take any time off the clock. Oh, good <laughs> test for Gilmore this league. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the Gilmore. What's he going to do week, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. they're going to put him on Kelsey probably. Put him on the tight end. No, I Not think Juan Williams on. is going to. He did a great job, Joe, on uh, Waller. Sammy Watkins is hurt. <laughs> oh, is that yeah. right? He's yeah. he's he's. Uh, well, he's not hurt, hurt, but he's limited. All right, let's go to the Red Sox. Uh, oh. It's happening, boys. It's happening. I've said it before. I've said it many times. I can feel it now. Jason Ferratek is ready. He's on the on-deck circle. He is going to be the next man. You are You are making a serious – Can I throw one, throw, I throw are... one thing? Is there any chance the Red Sox lower the price of their tickets? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they'll, you, um, they'll dress up the pig. They'll just dress you're, it up. You're just you're throwing bad, good, good money after bad on your predictions tonight. No, I don't even think Jason. I bet he doesn't even get an interview by Bloom. You kidding really? me? Yeah. No, I do bet that the Red Sox make a lot of noise this off season. They yeah. they have to get become relevant again, and so I can see them making news a lot this this off season. With, but they're uh, gonna Alex Cora more likely than Tech. They're gonna extend Chris Hill's contract another five years on top yeah. of that. <laughs> or are they may. Does, does Veritech sell tickets or no? No. Yes. No. no. He, he doesn't no. move the dial at all. No. I won't. Not be with guys, maybe, but a lot of the the wives. Uh, I don't know, Joe. Joe he's like, gained. He's gained about fifty pounds since the. Yeah, he does look a little right? chunky. It looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy right now. I would not yeah. be surprised. The free hot dogs and beer at the. I won't be surprised if one of the Red Sox main priorities is to go the minority route with a man. Yeah, I'd be yeah, right, I, Tim. I, I strongly believe if you read the Globe, and, you yeah. know, which John Henry owns, I, I'm pretty confident that that's the route they're going to go. I, I think Tim is right on that. I, I it could be Cora, um, or or Hispanic, or uh, you know, an African American. I, I could totally see that. Yeah. All right. I again, more bad news. John Lester. Just went over 1,000 innings pitching for the Cubs. He was washed up, Scotty. Yeah. Mm. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, we talk about Mookie Betts leaving. I was more affected by John Lester. Does yeah, that was go bad. It's one of the worst decisions the Red Sox have made in the last 25 years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. John Henry went to that convention at MIT, and he came back and said, don't sign anyone over 30, any yeah. pitcher over 30. And horrible that's what decision. they did. Yeah, horrible decision. You know, if you're a Red Sox young player and you're coming up the system, is it one of these things where you think you're leaving year six? It certainly seems like it. Bradley, Bradley's going to get out of town. Mookie wanted out. Benintendi doesn't look like he wants to be there. Xander's the only one who's sort of signed on. No. When's the last time that a Red Sox player mentioned exploring free agency and didn't leave? Never. I can't remember one. Mitch Moreland. Yeah. <laughs> boy. He no, oh, there. Oh, there was no the light bed. at the end of the tunnel in his exploration. Oh, man, I won the bet. I knew that you two bags would be mentioned by you. You're just, you're in love. Um, <laughs> <Give him up. laughs> who's going to win the major, who's going to win the World Series? I'm rooting for the Dodgers. Yeah, it looks, feels like it's a Dodgers year. It's such a weird year that, you know, that they, that they'll have the, um, that they'll have the, the, the the jump oh, on the these sighting. that's yeah that's the Jill sighting uh, they'll have the jump on these other teams they just have so much more talent that would be awful to have the Dodgers and the Lakers as champions it really would in be, the space it? of in the space of a month they'll become as arrogant as we are <laughs> no, right yes, that area deserves it they get more shit on top of them nope, I'm nobody, in LA, nope, nobody in L A will even notice that'll be the funny part <laughs> it's true no they love the Lakers they they, they really do love they the Lakers love the Dodgers. Them. Those are their yeah. two teams. Yeah. Had the Clippers won, they wouldn't have given a shit. But uh, 
Right. They, that's a Lakers Dodgers town. Um, they don't even care about the Kings at all. I've never seen somebody wearing a Kings shirt. Um, <laughs> All right, boys. So that's our show tonight. That went quick. We could have talked for another hour. I want to thank everyone behind the scenes, of course, Corbin. I want to thank the boys. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in again next Wednesday night at 6.30. For another edition of Grandstanders Live, I'm your host, Scott Kerman. Have a great and happy night.